I want to start because you were in I in Washington all last week for the International Monetary Fund right. World Bank meetings. Right. They did raise the Philippines GDP forecast for the year, this year. It's not a lot, but still six and a half from six point three. Yeah. They downgraded the whole world and exactly. upgraded. Exactly, and you were upgraded. Yeah. I want right. to underscore that because <laughs> it makes me wonder. Does it? You, you've mentioned recently that you have to see traction in the economy yeah. to support going ahead and starting the rate hike, mm -hmm. starting the normalization. Mm -hmm. So, is are you seeing more of that? That kind of traction mm -hmm. that will allow you to do that? Uh, you know, you got a meeting in May, but maybe that's a little too early, or you think? Yeah, they the economy bounced back by 5.7% last year from a recession in 2020. And then we expect the economy to grow at 7 to 9% this year. And then we'll go back to our normal 6 to 7% henceforth. Okay? So, yeah, we see the uh, improvements. For example, uh, manufacturing index is 52.4. Yeah. That's the highest in, in three years. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, plus foreign direct investment last year was grew by 52.4 percent. In a, in a globally, right. foreign direct investment went down, but in foreign direct investment went up in the Philippines last year. So is this something that reinforces? I mean, is that is that space since the March meeting so it, it narrowed for you to be able to say the economy's doing better, inflation starting to rise, we're going to start normalization. And again, when do you think the, when do you think the first meeting could be? Where you, where you actually we have the rate? a meeting on our next meeting is on May 19th, and so we'll look at the new data, and hopefully it will be it will show a, a first quarter growth of maybe around six to seven percent. And so uh, on the basis of that, maybe we'll wait another cycle, which is we have another meeting okay. in June. And maybe that's the time when we will consider the increase in policy rate. I want to ask you, I want to follow up on something that your, co your counterpart, the Treasury Secretary, uh, Carlos Dominguez told, Dominguez told me last week when I asked him about the risk of aggressive Fed rate hikes, which is a big IMF yeah. warning mm -hmm. hitting uh, individual economies. Um, he said uh, that if the U.S. raises rates, the Philippines will want to follow. You don't want to get behind the curve. But what's your answer? Are you concerned about getting behind the curve or the impact those rate hikes could have? You no, know, the situation right now is, to me, what makes a, the, the, what makes a big difference is the, the difference between the real interest rate in the U.S. and the real interest rate in the Philippines. Our inflation rate is around 3%. Mm -hmm. Yours is, in the U.S., it's 8.5%. <laughs> so, so given that, I think we, we can afford to wait as to what will be the move of the Fed in the next Two, two meetings. Okay. So you're not seeing second round inflation materializing anytime soon or in the coming months? Right now there's no evidence of second round effect on the demand side because for example the second round effect we will be in the nature of increase in transport as a result of the uh, oil prices and increase in wages, right? We don't see that happening. Okay. Also the, um, the other, the other thing is so real estate. Mm. It, it, there's a there's an, uh, an increase, tremendous, significant increase in real estate in in U.S. and other developed countries. We don't see that in the right. Philippines. Okay. Uh, Governor, I just wanted to ask you about peso weakness as well. You're concerned about the currency's depreciation, and how is that factoring into your thinking and its potential pass through to inflation as well? Okay, good, good question. Uh, inflation. Uh, we the peso has depreciated. Uh, at about the same rate, or in fact, it's at, at the middle of the depreciation of the other rate of the other currencies in the region. So we're not concerned about the uh, the uh, depreciation. It is within our target range of 48 to 53 pesos. That's the, the that's the uh, assumption in our in our model, and that uh, we have. Right now, we have a hefty gross international reserves, equivalent to 108 billion U.S. dollars. That's 9.5 months worth of imports and payment of services. The received doctrine is three months worth of imports is enough, right? Plus, we have a steady source of foreign exchange revenues from the overseas Filipino remittances and the, and the uh, BPO, business mm -hmm. process outsourcing. Between the two of them, that's already about 60 billion every every year coming in. 
So when I ask you about inflation, in the context of a couple of things, number one, the International Monetary Fund also boosted your inflation forecast for this year to, mm -hmm. what, 4.3%, only not too far above your target, yeah. 2 to 4%. At the same time, uh, it seems to me a big question for central banks around the world is the Ukraine war has vastly you know, mm -hmm. accelerated the food and energy price mm -hmm. increases, so your headline inflation gets very high. At the same time, it really hits your consumers and businesses hard. Mm -hmm. How are you sorting that out? Is that going to be a force? then that moves you faster toward the rate hikes or slows you down? Yeah, the 4.3% adjustment in, in the inflation uh, projection is already incorporates the impact of higher oil prices and the possible uh, other, other uh, food commodities, world food commodities. But we also see that that will go back to 3.6, and that's within our target range in, in 2022. Three. So that's from 4.3 to 3.6. So it's, it's still within our target range. Does that uh, re reduction in, in inflation back uh, down to what you say, 3.6% next year, is it, does that incorporate then this expectation there's probably going to be at least two to three rate hikes to help bring it down? Uh, yes, plus, plus the assumption that oil prices will normalize on, by next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I wanted to ask you about was... Um, the debt, mm -hmm. uh, and, and one another thing that uh, Secretary Dominguez mentioned was the idea that the economy is going to have to grow. I think he said at five or six percent mm -hmm. for the next five mm -hmm. years to help pare down the debt. I know your sta your standing with the ratings agencies is quite good now. Mm -hmm. Do you agree you're going to need that kind of growth? And mm -hmm. does, do you factor that into your policy decisions? Is it going to mean yeah. that that you have to be a little more careful with with the rate hikes? How, what does that mean? Yeah, the uh, situation is that before the pandemic, our debt to GDP ratio was around 39.6%. It went up to 60.5% as a result of the pandemic. But that's n still manageable. I think that globally, the debt to GDP ratio is 260 plus percent. Mm -hmm. okay? So to, to me, uh, we can easily outgrow that debt. And that's, so that's consistent with, with Secretary Dominguez's view. As long as the economy grows at around 6 to 7 percent, we'll be OK. Because that's the denominator. You, okay, right. As long as the denominator is growing much faster than the numerator, that's fine. Lowering the triple R rate, you say, is mm. uh, on uh -huh. the table this year? Correct, correct. Under what <laughs> conditions? Because that seems to a certain extent to go in the opposite direction of yeah. raising the key rate. What that is, is uh, not related to the crisis at all. I made that promise when I assumed the governorship of the central bank. I said I plan to, to reduce the uh, reserve requirement. At that time, it was 18% to single digit. And so that's still on the table. Okay. I, th I think because you... By doing that, you are taking so much money from the banking sector. That's, that's over-regulating the banking sector. So I will allow them to lend out the money the, rather than the central bank getting the money from them, let them lend out to the public. Just one more quick follow-on a question, uh -huh. and that is in terms of capital flight, Fed raising rates aggressively, others raising rates, mm -hmm. do you have any concern that, that that's another reason why you might have to raise your rates as, as much as you said or even more aggressively? Well, you know, in the past, uh, and I've seen many crises in my lifetime, okay? Every time we have a crisis, we run out of dollars, okay? To pay our foreign exchange debt. That's no longer the case. Uh, as I said, we have a hefty gross international reserves, and our okay. debt is very small. In fact, our foreign debt to GDP ratio is only 39.6%. Pretty impressive. So that's, so to me, that's, that's not a scary concept. And I think that uh, if I have money, and, and there's, uh, we have another fund, the, the FCD, Foreign Currency Deposit Unit, that's a backup, mm -hmm. and uh, that's significant also. If I have money, why should I bring it out of the country when, when, the, when the possibilities are very nice in the country?